Hello everyone, and before I go ahead with anything else here, I just want to say that I do apologize for my own voice. I'm currently quite sick, or I'm trying to pull through my own illness right now, and I do apologize at times if my if my voice gets really croaky or froggy or really cracky. If that happens, I do deeply apologize, and I'm just trying to sit that before I screw up anymore in this video. But onto this video topic, which is a video movie that I, this is a series I wanted to start last year on my channel here, and that was my favorite movies um, series. And I started it off with Launch of Arabia last year. And today I'm going to give you another movie that I personally claim that's one of my favorites. And yet I want to say it's an, also a very, very underrated Epic Swords, Epic Swords and Sandals movie. And that is the 2004 Wolfgang Peterson movie, Troy. Now, if you don't know what Troy is, I'll basically give this story to you right here that I'm going to read off Google. It's basically, um, it's mainly, above all things, based on the iconic story, the Ilad, the, um, the Battle of Troy of the Ilad, written by ancient Homer. No, I don't mean the Homer from the Simpsons. I mean the ancient... Um, almost like ancient Greek writer of Homer. And he wrote the Elad, which is almost somewhat based on, I don't know, I haven't read that. Uh, hopefully I can in the future. And basically, uh, the, this epic basically portrays the battle between the Asian kingdoms of Troy and Sparta. While, vi while visiting the, pro the Spartan king, Menelidius, played by Brendan Gleeson, Tro uh, the Trojan prince Paris, played by Orlando Bloom, falls from <coughs> basically he falls for Menelinius' wife, um, Helen, played by Diane Kruger, and takes her back to Troy. Menelinius' brother, King Armin Neman, played by Brian Cox, H having already defeated every army in Greece, he does his brother's fury as a as a pretext to declare war against Troy in the last kingdom, preventing his control over the Agarian Sea. And that is basically the story. And when it comes to this film, or Troy, a lot of people, I want to say this, a lot of people dis dis dismiss this film because they say it's not as good as Gladiator. What? In my opinion, Oh god, my voice really. <coughs> Alright, that was for the better. No, but really meant something there. Alright, but when people say they, 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 they don't think Troy is that great because of, like, in comparison to Gladiator, that's bullshit. Because A, I hate Gladiator. That, and you know what? I'm even not going to talk about that because I really don't like the film. And that's a whole different topic for a whole other day. But. Even though I don't actually hate the film, but I do not like Gladiator. And also, you should never criticize a film just because it's overshadowed by a movie that you may think is superior. Okay? I want to say that's some serious bullshit right there. Okay? Seriously. Film, that's horseshit. You should never compare a movie in comparison to another movie in the franchise. Just criticize the film for its own merits and own merits only. If it has pros and cons, criticize the film for that. Don't criticize the film because for the sake of, oh, it's not as good as this other movie. Seriously, if you're going to use that type of idea, fuck off. That's terrible. Alright. Um, now let's start with what is good. Even though I, I'm sorry, it took me this long, but 4 minutes and 25 seconds by now. Now the uh, Alright, here's what's good. Um Alright, this uh, I'll tell you what's good in the movie and the cast. I'll tell you the cast. Alright, I have it here. And there is Brad Pitt uh, God damn my voice. Brad Pitt as Achilles, Eric Bana as Hector, Diane Kruger as Helen, a Troy Alanda Boom as Paris, Rose Byrne as Briseis, Sean Bing as Odysseus, P. 
Peter O'Toole, who is very iconic for playing Lord Zeridia as Ben Priam, and also Brian Cox as Agon Nemon, and Ben Gleason as Menelinius. And those are basically the big hitters, the big iconic actors in this movie. And I just want to say straight up front, the actors in this movie are really damn good in my opinion and they all give really good performances. Compared to the dialogue, it may sound a little weird at times, but I really enjoy the dialogue at times. For the most part. But of the cast, in my view, there's three that stand out. The first one is Brendan Gleeson as Menelinius. Now, I just love this performance because, or mainly because of A, it's Brendan Gleeson. He always gives a great performance. Is that in this movie, he, as Menelinius, he, he's really power hungry, very millennia, very aggressive, very emotionally off balance, and he's very, very wary and strong willed every character. Like, whenever anything happens, he's willing to take such a big, triumphant action against it. And I think he's such a great character because of that. He's really, really freaking entertaining to watch. And then. The other really big performance that shines to me, at least, is Peter O'Toole as Priam, or as Hector's and Paris' father. And he is played beautifully by Peter O'Toole. Like I said, he's very well known for portraying another very great movie I love, Lawrence of Arabia. And in this movie, I love his performance in this movie because it seems so fragile and so emotional towards his sons, where, st where Hector, his son, is almost like very... Disciplined, very hardened by war, and Paris is very um, sap. I wasn't sappy, but he's very feminine in a way. But Peter O'Toole as a father, he's like one of those really fragile, really weak and emotional old man, and a real standout for his. Like, there's one moment in this movie where he kisses Achilles' hands for a reason, no, for um, because his because for certain reason I I will not tell you in the movie because the film is. But there's a scene in the tent with Peter O'Toole's uh, Priam and Brad Pitt as Achilles. And that scene alone is fantastic. I really love that moment. It's really, really good. It's really, really and But the standout performance in this movie is Brad Pitt as Achilles. I am um, going to say this very few, very rarely, but I'm going to say it. I fucking love this character and this performance. I really, really do. He's one of my favorite performances, in my opinion, ever. Like, I really, really love this performance. He's just so, he's very lion-like, he's very ruthless and brave and heroic and incredibly just awesome. He's like Ash from Evil Dead. He's like, very few of you, as guys will say this, that I can say is that there's very few characters who I can just automatically go up and say, he is awesome. Like, I'm very, very picky when it comes to characters like that, but Achilles is fucking awesome. Okay, he really is. And he just is incredible in my opinion. I really, really love that about him. And also, Sean Bean's narration really adds this great slickness and very sly feel to it that I really, really enjoyed. And also, this is one of the few movies where Sean Bean doesn't die in. Now that's a fucking surprise. And also, the cinematography by um, Roger Pratt is just beautiful. Like, those elongated shots where it just has a shot like this and just keep long going and cutting it in kind of short. On this landscaping over of the ancient city of Troy, which they actually filmed this film in Mexico. And I'm just saying, it looks beautiful. Like the effects and the practical use are just beautifully melded together. I really, really do love it. And um, I also love the, this film for having such a great pacing and well, I know, such a great, well structured story. Like it doesn't feel like there's a set, like there's a false sense of a climax or build up or anything like that. It's like no, it really did almost try to 
and really bring the book back to, to life, even though they had to really change some things, which is understandable because it's a book to film adaptation. Things have to change. I get that. Like, one of the most not notable ones is that in the book of Troy, when the tale of Troy, or the land of Homer, is that the battle took 10 years. But in this movie, it takes about 14, 13 days at least. And that's a big change, I kind of admit. But whatever. But I also feel like the film is just so well tightly wrapped and it just has such a smart look in its own pacing. I think it's really, really enjoyable for that. And also, this is this this is probably my favorite of this director. No, the the director of this film is Wolfgang Peterson. If you don't know who that he is, search him up. He has done some great films. And this is definitely Oh, oh my god, I'm, I'm sorry for my voice. Ah, here we go. Is that, this is definitely my favorite film by Wolfie and Peterson. Even though he is well known for other films like um, Das Boots, um, The Never Ending Story, a page in all that, and Air Force One. But this is definitely, like, in my opinion, his best film. Like, I love those three films. I love Air Force One, Never Ending Story is a childhood classic, and Das Boots is a very great film. And. <laughs> I also love the film for having such a fantastic, great feel of practical effects. Whenever they do use practical effects, like, A, in my view, they really do shine, and it really adds, like, this very, like, grounded feel for the film that I think really, really love, that I love about the feel of the film. It feels like the practical effects really do lend something well for the structure of the film. And also, me melding that with the CGI effects, to me, at least, they seem seamless. They really seem that great. And, like, I really do love how they bring in that sleeky, the slick feel for the CGI. And I also want to say the character interactions and the chemistry, even though it can be short at times, like with Achilles, with, um, played, by Brad, played by Brad Pitt, and Bruce is played by Rose Byrne, like, even though they have like like two or three days of interaction they still at some point they end up having sex and I'm just like mm, that seems a bit unfortunately rushed but in my view it's like while it may seem a bit rushed you still believe it you do believe the romance and you believe they come across with each other like they seem so seamless when they talk to each other like really Bounce off each other in my view is just wonderful. I really do love that. Well, I do admit the interactions with some characters can be short and a bit distracting for that. But I do want to say that it is, I do really love that. Now, so far, you may think, wow, you must, like, I really fucking love this film. And I do really fucking love this film for its own sake. And also, this film. One last thing to add, I want to say a lot about this film, is that it gives me such a great empowerment, such a big, great type of strength. Like, very few films for me can influence me. Some films may engross me. Some films may inspire me. This is one of those few films that makes me feel better as, as myself. It, feel, it makes me feel like a warrior. It makes me feel good. And when I can see a film that makes me feel good, that makes me feel strong, and makes me feel like a great person, you're doing a fucking good job. And this film is seriously underrated for its own sake. Now, you may think, Jack, you may think this film is perfect, isn't it? Well, I do love this film, and I do. I fucking love this film. I do. I do have some problems. Number one is that it is his historically inaccurate at times, and that is a tad dis distracting. But then again, I don't know that much of the accuracy in the film. Like I haven't read the book that's based on. But I'm just saying that can get a little in the way at times. But at times, it, for me itself, I can kind of forgive that. And, it, and for me, at times, it seems like my, another problem I have with the film is that it seems like. The effects at times can get a bit like when you like when you see the battles up close, and it's like you mush all the characters into big portions like that. And like when you get when you get, you know, like a shot like this, and there's like a bunch of people fighting this type of angles and all that. 
it's, it really can feel like that. Like, it feels a bit muted, and it seems to kind of, like, mend together, like, one big type of war scene blob, like that, I meant. But, and, well, and that is a distraction at times, and uh, there's some points where I'm a little off-focused. I'm not saying that, but, uh, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it seems to kind of knock me out of focus, like, oh, well, it's acting like that? It's just kind of weird for me. But, those two are my only problems with them is that it can get a little bloated with the effects and how it gets into the action at times. But, overall, I love this film to death. And it really is for me one of my personal favorites. A true underrated classic in my view. And if you, I highly encourage for anyone to watch it, Troy. You will not regret it, in my view. Well, you may not. And, it, and it, even if you don't like it, and even if you don't love it, or even if you don't like it, I would still at least get the idea that this film deserves to be watched. In my view, Troy, it's a true underrated classic. A sword and a sword and saga epic of its own kind, and in my view, one of my favorite films of all time. Thank you for watching, everyone. You know, before fucking hell, or oh, oh gosh, I almost, I almost forgot the rating, but I'm going to give Troy for its own problems. I'm going to give this film a solid ninety percent, and a solid nine percent. That seems like a really good ra ra rating for that. Overall, it really is one of my all-time favorites, and everyone, I hope you I hope you enjoy watching this movie, want to give it a chance, and yeah, thank you for watching everyone, I'll see you in the future for some trailer thoughts videos. Till then, I'm Jack, I'll see you.